A new version of Fedora Linux was released at the end of October. So Fedora 41 has seen the light of day. Since then, we took our time to test it in two flavors, the default GNOME and KDE. To see what our conclusion is, stay around. We installed Fedora 41 on real hardware and in a virtual environment. Both installation procedures went smoothly and with no issues. We installed Fedora 41 GNOME in VirtualBox and it immediately offered us the full screen experience, which is a rare occurrence in our view. The Fedora 41 KDE installation process also went as expected. The installation was easy, intuitive and logical. We are sure even the novice users would easily find their way around the Fedora installer. The whole procedure lasted between 5 and 10 minutes. In Fedora GNOME, the familiar setup app greets users upon installation. It's very user-friendly. So, for instance, users can enable third-party repositories directly in the setup app and there's no more need to jump through many hoops in Fedora and fiddle around in the command line to install popular software from external sources. The app enables you to create your user account and that's it. As usual, the new Fedora edition also offers the system tour. So if you are not familiar with the GNOME desktop, you'll find the presentation useful. In general, as we have already explained in some of our previous videos, GNOME offers a workflow similar to what you get on Android. And it's a far cry from what users have been accustomed to on Windows. What you get is a clean, empty desktop. To start working, just press your super key and you'll get the workspace view. Switching between workspaces is easy. To see all the apps installed on your system, just click on the grid menu. Fedora comes with all the essential things needed to get you started. Fedora features GNOME Desktop version 47, which we talked about in our Ubuntu 24.10 video, and the kernel version 6.11.4. Just a quick reminder, GNOME 47 brings a host of improvements and enhancements such as in files, the file manager. You can now customize the sidebar by removing the bookmarks and keeping the ones you want for a cleaner look. Also, starting with GNOME 47, users can finally change the colors of their Fedora experience. By the way, we had been opening and closing apps, tweaking things and still Fedora used around 2 GB of memory. Among the other things, Fedora 41 features a new terminal app, which is said to be a brand new app with more features. Still, one of the key things with operating systems is if apps work properly, so that users can get their job done. In Fedora 41, the default web browser is Firefox, and no surprises there. The app works as expected. The default Office Suite is LibreOffice version 24.8.3.2, so it's one of the latest at the time of recording the video. By enabling the third-party repositories, users can get access to many popular apps from external sources. So, for instance, if you need a Chromium-based web browser, you can easily get one, like Chromium itself, offered from Fedora's repositories. The apps in Fedora are by and large offered from multiple platforms, including Flatpak, which is a platform bringing sandboxed, regularly updated applications. So now you can easily install many popular apps for, say, photo or video editing. If you need proprietary web browsers like Chrome, you can get it in Fedora 41 too via Flatpak. or Microsoft Edge as well, or Vivaldi. If you need a free and open-source Chromium-based web browser, you can find Brave as well in Fedora Software Store. If you need a client for apps like WhatsApp, you can do that too in Fedora. 
So let's see how the Software Store app works. For demonstration purposes, we installed VLC Media Player, a very popular application that will play any format you throw at it. It's offered from various sources, but we decided to take the one from Fedora's official repositories. The installation went flawlessly and the application started with no issues. Our experience with Fedora 41, be it GNOME or KDE, has been excellent. In some of our earlier videos, we didn't recommend Fedora to beginners. However, now Fedora has reached a level of polish appropriate for new Linux users. The distribution just works. Have you tried Fedora 41 and what's been your experience? Tell us in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video. If you find it useful, give us a like and share it. Subscribe to our channel and help to produce more videos. See you next time. Bye.